Greetings everyone, and welcome to Anime Night in the Dojo. Today's featured show, Don Machi, Season 4. Yes, Don Machi, Season 4, Episode 11. Welcome back, Ryu. He's age. This is my messed up hair after going outside earlier and breaking a bunch of stuff on accident and losing my hair tie. I can't find my backup, so here I sit. But, uh, you know, it's where I've been at the whole recording session. Just have to reiterate it every new video. Anyway, um, Bell's dead, so why are we here? You know? Why is there another episode? That's how the series ends. I mean, Juggernaut got him. Sometimes that's just how the game ends for some people, you know? Uh, you, you get a hyper gory end of a, a, a series and... And that's, that's how you end it. Can you imagine if that's how the series ended? That would have been hardcore as hell. That would have been, like... You know, people have issue with how The Sopranos ended. Man, this would have been... Just like, oh yeah, that's it. We're done. <laughs> that's how Bell goes out. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Main, stories, main story, series ends. Uh, sort of Artoria becomes main series. Right. <laughs> that, that, that's where it picks up and... Uh, you know, we just get, uh, you know, super vengeful Hestia or something. Man, how about that for a character turn if Hestia went and, like, turned into, like, all black and just... Dude, I kind of want that now. <laughs> she just, like, becomes the Punisher or something. <laughs> anyway, uh, ridiculous nonsense aside, uh, we talked about it last week, uh, you know, Mermaid blood, probably. Marie's going to do a thing. She's going to save him. He's going to get his arm back. He's not really... Ryu's probably going to freak out about it for a while. Um, Jura's going to die horribly trying to do a thing. Uh, you know, if 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 we're going to put Vegas odds on him, you know, pulling it off, uh, you know, go ahead and put that, you know, $10 bet, that $10 Kevin Malone bet on, you know, if anybody ever gives you 10,000 to 1 on anything, you take it. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is far greater than the Kevin Malone bet, so um, this isn't 10,000 to 1. <laughs> there, there's probably at least 8 or 9 more zeros tacked onto that. So, uh, if this does work for him, I will be surprised. So. I mean, I've stated last week, like, that it is possible that it works for him. There are ways that they could have it work. Um, but I don't think that's what we're going to go for. Yeah, I don't know. It just everything with the whole Dix thing and the Ecolos Familia. If they were able to... You know, this thing arguably could make floor bosses look tame. So, you know, I just... It would have to be some weird, crazy techno babble. So if that happens, it's whatever. But realistically yeah, speaking, but I, I just I don't see it happening. Yeah, overall, that was my main argument against why I don't think they're going to have it work because of the whole thing of this is it. Like, if this was like something the evilist came up with, then I'd put more odds at it possibly working. But specifically, since it was Dix and the Eagleos Familia and stuff like that. I don't necessarily think be a thing because <clears throat> we already know who the Eagles familiar and we already can compare them. Whereas we don't really know what Evilus was capable of. Right. And we know that the Eagles familiar, if they could have, would have gotten their hands on a floor boss. Yeah, I mean they they had been doing it far longer. Um it just feels like Evilist just came across these, you know, magic items and are just kind of using them, you know. Um, so that is what it is. Um, it'll be kind of interesting to see how they handle the whole Marie thing. Um, whether Cassandra is able to, you know, keep everybody from going after Bell. Uh, but. The only other thing up in the air is when the Juggernaut is going to, you know, deactivate, for lack of a better term. You know, yeah, when is I... it going to go, okay, the threat's been neutralized, um, I can go home. 
Yeah. So we already know from what Uranus was saying that it'll keep going until the presumed threat is gone. And we know that that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to kill everyone on the floor. Because once again, we had both Jura and Ryu survive last time. Plus also, uh, it wasn't as a direct result of like this, as we found out. Um, what's her face? The Banshee survived the whole Evilist massacre too. Right. Though, as we found out, that it was a two separate situations between this and the actual Evilist massacre. Yeah. They just happened around the same time. This happened as a result of the Evilist massacre. Yep. So, that being said, I don't really have too much to say going into this one. Uh, just kind of got to wait and see what happens. Uh, Marie is still, you know, kind of a wild card. Um, but I, I don't think she's going to let Belle die. You know? Yeah, no. I'm just... And that's literally their only out, you know, aside from uh, Fells coming out of nowhere and, like, using the resurrection spell on him. You know what I mean? Yeah, and Fells... So Fells is in play because we know Fells is in the dungeon at the moment. Last we saw him was in... Um, whatchamacallit, the... Eagle's Familia's, uh, like, secret labyrinth within the dungeon. Right. Um, so we don't know how far it would, like, the the nearest access, nearest uh, entrance that he can access is from floor 27. But he is still potentially at play right now. The yep. most likely thing, though, is still just, we already, Marie's already on the way to find Bell, And Bell specifically collapsed right next to right there on the water's edge and you know his arm yeah. with the hestia dagger fell into the water yeah and we already had the previously the previously established thing earlier this season of mermaid blood heels yep so I'm gonna go ahead and push some buttons and see what happens and talk about it and then wonder when the uh the dub is gonna start up again We'll get to that, so here goes something. Oh, is it still worth the 80 million? <laughs> no, Were you not paying attention to the Firebolt cast? It'd be a real shame if he drowned after all that. <sighs> it doesn't have a magic stone. Once again, this isn't the monster. This is the dungeon itself pissed off. Use the fact that the spell reflection seems to multiply it by like three or four fold. Yeah. Yeah, about that. I won the over-under on the 2-1 to one on Darth Mauled. <laughs> Unlike Darth Maul, he's not surviving that one, though, I'm pretty sure. 
about that. You won't be there anytime soon. Way to jinx him, man. This is it. The White Palace. And that means I'm deeper than ever before. He's uh, got himself about a, about a 10 floor shortcut there. Yep. Uh, I don't think we've been this right about anything in, in quite some time. <laughs> uh, so pretty much calls it on the mermaid thing, though. I mean, that was already seeded earlier this season. He was around, so that wasn't that big of a pull. Uh, mm -hmm. Jura getting Darth mauled. That was just me being an asshole, and it still happened. That's literally how he went out. He literally got cut in half Darth Maul style, right, right at the waist. I... I literally don't believe it. Of all the ways for him to go. All right. <laughs> I mean, this thing does have a history of bisecting. Though, so once again, uh, he's... Uh, he, he doesn't have the whole, I'm Darth Maul and I have the dark side uh, to potentially save him, though. Right. I, I'm pretty sure he's dead. So there's that. Um... I don't really have too much to say about this one. Um, that is on a tangent because of Darth Maul. That is one thing that a lot of people get misconstrue uh, who have like only just watched the movies is just a lot of people highly underestimate Darth Maul and not realizing just how freaking strong in the dark side he actually is. Or, you know, that he actually survives in the first place. Right. Uh, spoilers, Darth Maul survives the whole getting uh, Darth Mauled thing by Obi-Wan there. And it's pretty cool. <laughs> he gets cut in half, falls to the bottom of the pit, and is so thoroughly pissed off at Obi-Wan that he refuses to die because that's how the dark side works. Yep. Until it he eventually manages to freaking scrape together the literal like jury rig lower half of, of his body cybernetically mm -hmm. so uh yeah there's a little darth maul lore out of nowhere but um i guess my only real questions are uh i assume marie has an upper upper limit of what she can heal obviously uh ryu's healing spell probably helped to a certain extent uh kind of like a life support deal um, but other than that, I assume she has to have some limit because there's only so much blood you can lose, even as a mm -hmm. mythical creature. Um, and I'm wondering if the Hestia dagger absorbing mermaid blood has done something to it. I don't necessarily think so. The whole thing with the... I thought for a brief second, too, that there might have been something up, but the whole thing with the, like, the runes lighting up was just Bell holding the knife, because that's, the, like, the whole thing to it. It's just... It's bound to him, and it only actually has magical qualities when he holds it. Right. So when, whenever anyone else holds it, like in the case of Bree, it's just a regular knife. Yep. Which is why, uh, destructible knife, but a regular knife, right? Which is why when Lily tried to pawn it off, uh, it looked like a something worse than a, a common table knife, uh, value wise. <laughs> value is only there if Bell's holding it, but uh, as for the rest of it, the action sequences were all right. Um, not sure I buy into him inexplicably now being, uh, faster than the juggernaut out of nowhere considering it was faster than he could track before so is bell a saiyan now survives near death experience is now much stronger <laughs> i mean i i i was also kind of questioning that but i kind of attribute that to less being that he's on capable of like on its acting on its speed suddenly and more just now that he knows what it's uh, what it's uh, capable of he's reacting more accordingly 
most of like him losing in the first place was just him not really understanding what he was up against. And then this round two here, he knew what it was capable of and he was changed his fighting staff accordingly. Right. And I can I can live with that to a certain extent, but still, uh, I mean, the way they portrayed it, it was uh, out facing him pretty drastically. Like his arm was gone before he knew what happened. <laughs> There's only so much uh, understanding the opponent is going to do for you if the speed difference is that high. But uh, that is what it is. I'm not going to worry too much about it. Whatever. Um, we also have seen that he's still not at his peak for this level. I mean, I'll just recently hit this level. Like, that was the prime example we've seen earlier this season of him rapidly becoming fa learning how to become faster with the whole uh, the fish. So, we still don't know if he could very well have been just going faster now that he's fighting a faster opponent. Yeah. That and he's not using a random nonsense weapon that was just on the battlefield. <laughs> Surprise, surprise, yeah. you move better with your own freaking equipment that you're used to. Who would have guessed? <laughs> What's that? You're you're dealing some damage with your actual weapons? What a novel concept. <laughs> Hold on, I'm just going to pick up this tree and chuck it at my opponent instead. Because <laughs> once again, this is similar to the fish. This was just another case of strength-wise, there wasn't that big of a difference between him and the opponent. The big thing really is just... The thing was faster than him, and as we find out in this fight, he lives up to its name and that it's a juggernaut. Damage to it doesn't really do much. Right. Uh, as far as the rest of it, um, apparently, based on what was shown here, uh, it's uh, <laughs> we, we made a big deal about its uh, spell reflection. Uh, last week it, it appears that uh this is the kind of spell reflection that is like a backlash wave where it uh takes your spell and says huh that's a nice spell you got there i'm going to reflect it back at you but also multiply its power by several x amounts you know what i mean <laughs> yeah which, that's what we saw with like boar's whole crew there and then that's ultimately what Bell tried to use against it here was just the whole like uh yeah I know you're gonna reflect it back at me and it's gonna be stronger but I'm just gonna use that to make it to where my uh knife attack is even stronger because I can absorb after you reflect mm -hmm. and uh, apparently they're not allowed to pinball that back and forth so uh the second backlash is all that it uh caps out at so it didn't get ridiculous yeah because the whole thing is the spell reflect only works on actual spells and the enhanced knife is still like an actual attack it's not a spell yeah so that was cool i always i always appreciate mechanics like that um but as for the rest of it i mean it leaves up uh a lot for uh second core um yeah, Juggernaut's still in play. Jura isn't. Um, now we have Lily and them having to fight the abnormal floor boss, which we don't know to what extent it is abnormal. All we know is that it respawned early and that it left its floor. Right. So presumably it's a similar type of abnormal to the Goliath, because that's what happened with the Goliath, was that it woke up off of its normal uh, cooldown and then left its floor to attack the safe zone. Mm-hmm. So, uh, they're going to need to cheese it. I don't think there's any fighting this thing. This, this isn't like, oh, hey, we have a small army of adventurers that are in the safe zone that we can throw at it. It's basically just them. So unless, you know, the Loki Familia appears out of nowhere, you know, they need to get out. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's where we're left. We're left with them with a floor boss and Bell and Ryu in incredibly rough shape. 
uh, 10 floors down on the 37th floor in a place that you apparently don't want to be, even if you are, say, Eyes Wallenstein. So, that's not good. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, I uh, specifically called out that, like, even, like, top, like, A-ranking adventurers have a hard time in 37, so, like... Presumably, it's still a threat to, like, say, eyes or whatnot who are S rank, but, like, yeah, yeah it, this is not a safe space. No. And, uh, you know, from being... the, sound, the way that we're sound, making it sound, it sounds like the whole, like, differential between the floors isn't necessarily linear where like some floors are rougher than others even if you go further down so like i wouldn't be surprised with the way i know was talking about this place is that floor 37 is probably one of the standout like really difficult floors well if when i recall correctly the floor boss that i soloed was the floor 36 boss uh mm -hmm. I think it was, yeah, it was, I'm pretty sure it was 30s, so it probably was, yeah, like, the boss you had to beat to get to 37. So, that being the case, uh, if you get past that guy, what's next? And if it's infamous, and has a special name, that makes it worse. <laughs> yeah, because once again, like, similarly, this is supposed, the whole, like, three floors here that make up this water balls is supposed to be another, like, notoriously difficult location, like, even more so than the floors around it. Right. And it all counting as one floor, apparently, so, you know. Uh, that's... Well, that, it's, it's still, t it's, t it's three floors, it's just the whole thing with Juro talking about that was just that they're so, like, interconnected with the fact that they share a theme and all that, that in the case of damage, the dungeon views them all as one floor. Yeah. But they're still technically separate floors, which is why the floor boss coming up to floor 25 is still an abnormality. Yeah. And it did, it definitely seems to have some sort of agenda. <laughs> as, uh, Usually when floor bosses spawn, they, uh, you know, they are where they are. But now we've seen yeah, they... both times now with the abnormals that they are going straight after a cluster of adventurers in this case. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how they deal with this because I, <laughs> as uh, strong as they are and with the Kokonoe spell, they could level boost, but this is a floor boss designed to be fought by dozens of adventurers, not, you know, a group down their best fighter. And basically all they have is Aisha and Dakota, you know? Yeah, like they've been, a lot of this season was them iterating, the, like reiterating the whole fact that uh, the rest of the group is still quite competent, even without Bell. Bell was just like their ace in the hole uh, because he's ridiculously strong for his level, regardless what level he's at. Um, but yeah, like, this is still something that should be way beyond what they're capable of. Even with Bell, this would probably be something that they'd have a hard time with. And they're not at 100%. They're down pretty much yeah. all their magic weaponry. They're, they're shot. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, they, well, they're, they need a they break. Did, they did get their break. They did get a break. Um... But then they have had to dip into stuff again since then. Like, they had to do the, like, the partial Kokonoe uh, earlier. Since after their rest. Yeah. So, like, they're still sitting on at least some Haruhime reserve, but she's already spent somewhat. And once again, if she actually goes full Kokonoe, then she becomes a hindrance because she immediately collapses. Yep. Full Mega Mean. Uh, that, that's the last thing they need right now when they need to be uh, trying to get out. So this is going to be a thing. Um, going forward, we are where we are. Both situations are interesting and perilous. 
Um, it'll be interesting to see if Marie comes into play at all in any more of this. Um, Once again, Cassandra can't understand her own freaking uh, predictions. Yeah. Once again, she still got the Floor 27 thing wrong, and she not only did she get the Juggernaut thing wrong, not only that, that she got the Juggernaut thing wrong, because the thing that she was actually predicting was the floor boss. Yep. She just thought it was the Juggernaut, and she thought they had to avoid Floor 27. Indeed. Instead, here we are. Real bummer. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Looking forward to it. Um, the sub has continued. Uh, that started back up on the 5th. But uh, Don Machi has been uh, slower to get to the dub. So I'm not sure when we'll get to that. I mean, if I hadn't lost the two weeks due to the flood nonsense and the other thing, um, we'd already be we'd be in a much longer waiting room. But we're just going to wait um, at this point. So there probably won't be. Uh, unless it comes out of nowhere and the dub comes out, you know, by, the, by our next recording session. Um, you know, we'll give it all the way till like the night before, but uh, if it doesn't, um, and we can't put a, the next episode out for next Monday, uh, we're just going to wait. Um, maybe throw up some other random things on Monday to be quick filler or whatever, but uh, Damachi is still going to hold it down until the uh, second core is over. But, uh, you know, they had their like... Uh, Three week hiatus uh, in between cores, and then uh, you know it takes a while for the dub for this to get going. And I believe uh, the subs on is going to be on like episode four or five uh, this weekend, so we'll just have to see what happens. Um, but we'll continue whenever the dub fires itself back up. You know, so hopefully just a couple weeks at most, but uh, you know, it'll be here. Be back more done machi at some point. So, yeah, I'm in. I'm ready. Should be cool. Uh, it, I assume at some point we'll get more, you know, Loki familia. The the lack of Hestia this season has been palpable. <laughs> I, mean, I called that one like right out the gate. Was <laughs> well, yeah. The uh, the outro is like exclusively Hestia. The reason for it is because she's like one of the poster characters, but we're not going to get her this season. Yep. <laughs> not even some weird gag cutaways to her or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. There was, she, she's only showed up like two or three times this entire season, and it was usually just when they were like in between story arcs for this, they would cut back to her and be like, wait, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> She, she's probably had about like five minutes of uh, screen time this this these entire eleven episodes. So anyway, that's all I got. You got anything else, Age? Um. I don't think so. Uh, oh, the Turk screw is still out and about somewhere. Yep. We still have to figure out what the hell's going on with that. Like, those, the main two things that we have still have unresolved going into this next bit that are like totally out of nowhere, they're like totally just we know nothing about at this point is what's happened to Turk's crew and still has been no payoff whatsoever to whatever Marie tried to call. Right. So there you have it. So I'm going to go try to fix my hair. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back with more Don Machi at some point. So, ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube, beyond however you're watching, we always appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with us here in the dojo for more anime night in the dojo. And this was Don Machi, season four, episode 11. First core done. Um, not sure how many episodes the second core is. I assume at least another 11. So, anyway, have a good morning, evening, afternoon, whatever it is for you. Have a good one. According, according to live charts, another 11. Another 11. All right. Well, we'll be back for the second 11 uh, whenever the dub fires back up. So, see everybody next time. Hey, everyone. Victoria here. 
If you enjoyed the video, please consider pushing that subscribe and like button. Any and all support is greatly appreciated. Thanks again for your time, and see you next time.